Alright guys, so we are on the way down to the golf course. It's going to be absolutely awesome. We're testing out the TB7 irons today. I absolutely love these irons. You guys are going to see a whole bunch of shots with them. Uh, various different shots, long irons, short irons, whatever. Or longer irons, 7 iron because I go up to the 7 iron and then I get the 6 and the 5 and the TB5. But today we're talking TB7. We're going to go play Sanctuary Cove at the Palms and this is going to be awesome. Let's get to it. Yeah, I'm just here for a golf time, 7.25. Thank you. Love these clubs. Ten feet. Ten feet. Oh, this is so slow, Ty. on it. Oh, right shot. And it will be. I could be in the hole. That's pretty good. Nail on these par threes. guys well that was the on course testing of these irons which was absolutely awesome obviously i only got to play with the irons mainly the par threes because once you hit the driver on the tee boxes then it's kind of like a wedge or some kind of rma wedge into the green so it's a shorter course there that we were playing but the par threes the, the irons performed absolutely amazing i got to hit the seven the eight the nine the pitching wedge and of course the wedges and we are talking the tb7 today so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting into the pitching wedge to warm up and i'm just going to give you some of my thoughts and some of the techs and specs about these irons the lofts the shafts that i'm using the grips that i'm using and exactly how they feel whether we can shot shape them or not and exactly how consistent these irons are so let's get straight into it let's get into the pitching wedge we're down here at the t-block Pitching wedge goes around about 130, so I'm going to set the green at about 120 to start with, and then as I warm up, I'll get into the 7 iron and we'll go from there. TB7 pitching wedge, not 100% sure what this loft is actually, I'll throw it down there, but I just know that it goes around about 125 to 130, so starting a warm up 120. I have switched my ball, I've got a Bridgestone, this is a brand new ball that I'm using here in the T block, but I've got a Bridgestone 2 of XS. So what I did is when I went to these new clubs, I knew that the lofts were a little bit stronger. I went to a ball that was a little bit more spinnier just to help with those stronger lofts to just keep the same spin consistency, which I've also done with the shafts. And we'll talk about that. So I have been working on my swing quite a lot and it's starting to come together, but sometimes, some days, it doesn't. So let's hope today is one of those good days. Oh, that was 
That was a very tired, sore and stiff first swing. And it's one thing that, um, I should have put this green probably a little bit shorter to start with with these warm-ups, but it's one thing with the club to be really good when you're hitting the middle of the club, but you also want to know the off-center strikes and the consistency of those. Now, I've hit those first two quite poorly, and you can see that they've still gone the same distance. That's better. Now we're getting the back moving. That's flush. And that's gone about 126 carries, 7,900 spin and the descent angle was really good, so happy with that. Didn't really rotate far enough, but again, 125 carry on a nice smooth pitching wedge. So when you're looking at these, the sole design of the TB7s is quite thin, which is what I like. I like a thin sole design, but I think it's not so thin that it's gonna scare people off. And what it does is for people that are like me that are a little bit steep, it gets in and out of the turf really quickly. So I've never really done well with a sole that's a lot thicker, unless you get into the longer irons like the TB5 in the five and six iron because you know, I'm kind of swinging it a little bit differently. But with these scoring clubs, I've always liked and wanted a thinner sole to get in and out of that turf. I can get more spin on the ball and the variable face thickness that this has helps with those off-centered strikes. Yeah, nice. So what the variable face thickness is, is basically across the face, it has a variable thickness to compensate for those off-centered strikes and make sure that across the face you're getting more consistent strikes and that we don't always hit them out of the middle, of course, but they're going in the same direction. And not only that, you're getting the same level of distance, I would say, for the strike that you're putting on the club. So it's not like you hit one out of the toe, you lose 30 meters, and then you hit another one out of the toe and you lose 15 meters, and then it's just hard to judge. The variable face thickness is gonna try and keep those miss hits consistent as we saw with the first couple. And then the last three good ones are almost all on the exact same carry number. That's better. That's more like it. And that should go out to that 130. Yeah, 128, 129 carry. That is beautiful. Let's get in the seven iron. Seven iron, and the shaft that I've got in these guys is a Modus uh, NS Pro 105 Stiff Flex. Now, the reason why I went down to the 105 shaft was there were a couple of reasons. Again, uh, the loft of the clubs are a little bit stronger. The seven iron here is 30 degrees. I'll put the lofts down there again. Uh, but the NS Pro is a really, really good shaft. And uh, maybe a year and a half or two years ago, I had graphite shafts and I really loved the weight of the graphite shafts being a little bit lighter. So I wanted to go back into something lighter. I feel like it helps me with my tempo slow down a little bit. I also feel that the softer shaft actually gets me a little bit more lag because of my short backswing. So I need all the help there that I can get. So when you're getting yourself fit into a club, keep some of these things in mind. My driver swing speed with that is around about 122 mile an hour. Most club fitters straight away would put me into an X-Flex shaft. I've had X-Flex shafts, I've had heavier shafts at 120, 130 grams. They just don't work as well. So, and I'm not saying that for everybody, I'm just saying that for me personally, I prefer a shaft that I can actually feel a little bit of the flex in there and it just helps me with my tempo, keep it smoother and hit more greens. Now, would I get further distance out of an X-Flex? Sure, because the spin would be lower, but I'm looking to hit a particular window and a particular number and that's what these things do. So I'm gonna start the green with a seven iron at 160 meters. I'm still kind of warming up and as I'm warming up, that will get pushed back. I'm loving, see that light little fade there? Absolutely love that. I've been hitting that on course a lot. 160 bang on the number. I just gotta aim a little bit more left here in the simulator. So 160 meters of carry, 5,927 spin. I mean, that's, that's why I went with the shafts that I went with and also just changed the ball to a little bit spinnier ball because it, it hits a perfect, perfect number. That is just pure. That is absolutely pure. Get in the hole. Oh, I'm starting to warm up now. 125 ball speed, 163 meters of carry, which again, has given me more distance with these irons. They do have a 30 degree loft, I'll say that again, so the loft police will probably be out there. But you know what, when you've got faster swing speeds, you do need to decrease the loft, otherwise you get too much spin, the ball goes too high in the air, and you actually lose a lot of distance. Bryson talked about this all the time, and whether you like him or not, he's on tour and playing really well, so I think his advice is probably pretty good to take. Launch angle, 18.9 degrees as well. I love that in a 7.9, and my spin there was 5,837. So they have hit optimal win uh, window numbers for me. So that one was a bit of a miss hit, kind of rushed the transition, off the toe, a little bit chunky, 
and I've got 150 seven rolling out to 160 and I'm still in the green. So the miss hits are important to see as well as obviously the really good strikes because these people would look at these and think, oh, well, they're a blade and they're gonna be hard to hit. And you know, they're not gonna be very forgiving when it's actually the opposite. You need to go and try these because you have the off center hits, they still go really well. They're more of a muscle back style anyway. You can see it's got like this little groove here in the top um, and that's gonna help with that extra forgiveness. These are definitely just not for the better player. I'd say anyone up to really a 10, 12, 13, 15 handicap could hit these. Then you hit them like that. That's good. 159, 121 ball speed. Happy with that. We'll hit one more. That's coming back beautifully. 124 ball speed, 162 meters of carry, 5,200 and something spin. And that is awesome. So other than, actually all of them hit the green. Every single one of those five shots there hit the green. And, and one of the things that I will say is that the weight of the clubs is super, super important. So the swing weight for me, and when you get fitted, make sure you get fitted by uh, one of the retailers who actually do 14 golf, who have the right fitting what, how do I, resume, whatever you want to call that, but somebody who actually knows how to fit you into a golf club, I'm going to link in the description below where you can go and see your local retailer for 14 golf. But once you get a proper fitting, and, and I know my specs pretty well, the swing weight of the club matters a lot because the tempo is going to affect how you de deliver the club to the ball and the result that you're going to get at the end. All right, so I might be a little bit in the dark here to make sure that these numbers come up on the screen, but basically uh, I took out the first couple of bad shots with the pitching wedge. Um, just because they're the very first two shots that I hit. But other than that, ball speed 104.3, launch angle at 24.5. Love that spin, just on 8,000, which I'm happy with as well. Carry 125. So what I'm really looking at there is I'm really looking with the loft at probably something like a traditional 9-iron, which I'm super, super stoked with. Then into the 7-iron, average ball speed 122.5. Bear in mind, I am still warming up. I could probably get that up to 125, 126 without too many problems. Launch angle, I'm really, really happy with. 19.7 degrees. It's come down a lot if you've watched my previous videos from about 22. A lot of that is thanks to the Pro Sander. Get yourself one of those. Um, 5,960 backspin, which is just perfect. 160 meters of carry. Again, I could probably push that out a couple of meters as I'm warming up. Probably 162, 163, I would say. But those numbers as a baseline for me, I'm super, super happy with. The clubs perform perfectly well. I've gained distance, I haven't sacrificed spin, I've got better launch windows, and really I'm hitting a shot shape that I'm, I can work with almost anywhere, which is just that slight fade. In conclusion, guys, I really do love my new set of 14 clubs. I have the mixed bag. I've got the 5 and 6 and the TB5, and then the TB7s down to the 40, uh, sorry, the pitching wedge, and then from 48 to 52 in the RMA wedges. So they are super, super soft feeling. They look amazing. There's not too much offset down at the ball. And if you haven't checked them out already, make sure you do. I'm going to link in the description a link to the 14 Golf Australia website so you can check them out and find your closest retailer to test them and get fitted. Uh, and please do get fitted. But guys, I'm super, super stoked with these clubs. Absolutely over the moon. And I, I just think they're sensational. So check them out for yourself. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.